Oh! Purdue's going to Sweet 16. I'll be real honest. I didn't really want to do that, that yell thing, but I, uh, I had a whole plan of talking down Purdue. Just kind of talking about all the negatives. And I couldn't find many. Braden Smith has three tur- had three turnovers. That really let me down. I mean, I don't know what to say, guys, girls, everybody. Um, Purdue's heading to Sweet 16. Purdue uh, beats the brakes off Utah State. Purdue earns their 31st win uh, of the season. I think that's a record. I think it's what you guys said last game. And I want to talk about it. I'm trying to keep it contained a little bit for a second. So I'm going to, before I do it, I'm going to keep it calm. Would you want a sweatshirt like this? Head over to Home Field Apparel. Enter Boiled 23, get 15% off. And went on campus. You want delicious beef. You want delicious burgers. You want the best damn appetizers in the world. You want some funnel cake. Um, what do we call it? What, funnel cake straws. We can try that. If you want a boiled sports magnet at the bottom of your beer, you know, head towards fire station. Then you go into AJ's, all right? And you get there and you get the best damn staff you're going to find. Talk to Adam, talk to Jake, smile all damn day, watch some TV, watch some basketball after Purdue's cruise to a victory. Who knows? Do what you want to do. It's your day. It's your special day. Uh, burgers, beef, beer. That's AJ's. EatAJ's.com. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not an optimism, or optimist naturally anymore, guys and girls. I'm really not. I'm a realist. And I came into this game and I thought Purdue would beat Utah State. I did not think it would be like that. I did not think with 12, 13 minutes left, I was, would be saying, get the starters out of this game. Get them out of there, right? We saw Purdue doing a lot of good things, some okay things, you know, whatever. Um, Purdue just beating Utah State like a drum. And um, and then Lance Jones stole the ball, went for a, a finish and got fouled. And I was like, all right, enough, 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 enough. I think that was at like the nine-minute mark. I'd already been begging to see everybody on the bench in the game. Somehow I wanted to see Purdue play eight or nine guys. That was, that was an incredible show of strength by Purdue. And the wild thing about it is Purdue did not start the game well. Edie was a little jumpy, a little twitchy in the beginning. He was banging skyhooks off of the back of the rim and even off the glass, one of them. Purdue did, my, my wife said, why does Purdue always start slow? And I'm like, they don't always start slow, but sometimes they do. And this season, we still haven't, or well, <clears throat> that's wrong. We haven't seen one of those games where Purdue starts like they're fired out of a cannon in over a month, right? And this game was no different. The game was somewhat tight for a few minutes, Right. And then Purdue, that's not right. It, it was somewhat tight for longer than a few minutes. Utah State was fighting like hell. Martinez was keeping in. Martinez had 11 points in the first half. Purdue didn't nearly have an answer for him. They put Lance on him. They put Mason, by the way. Gillis, that's the guy who was the speed bump who really put Martinez, caused him to slow down, stop scoring on Purdue. I think he had two or three threes. He was working Purdue, going to the glass. Coming into this game, if you looked at this, LBD said to me, <clears throat> he said, here's Utah State's game. They don't shoot the ball very well. They try to get their points at the back- basket. They try to get rebounds. They try to fight teams for rebounds. And I said, they're in big trouble. This is not the team that Utah State, want- State wants. They do not want to play this Purdue team. And we heard some funny sentiment before the game, some smarter than FDU type sentiment from uh, Rainbow Sprinkle. See, <clears throat> I nothing against Sprinkle, but... I, if I were his friend, his nickname would be Rainbow, just because his last, last name is, is it lends itself. I got nothing to make against Coach Sprinkle. He's good. He's a good coach. Came from Montana State, <clears throat> brought a player or two with him to Utah State. <clears throat> they they they're a good team. Mountain West tough conference, and Purdue made them look completely outclassed, out athletic, outsized. Purdue looked faster. Purdue was better prepared. Purdue was completely motivated. They said they were going to get physical with Purdue. The refs called an even fair game, which was trouble. Because if you're going to play that brand of game and you're going to have Purdue doing what Purdue does, and then the and the refs are actually going to be, I don't know, I want to say fair, but somewhat fair. I mean, they had one of the worst calls I've ever seen on Smith uh, to get his second, right, before the first end of the first half. Smith had to sit a lot in the first half. 
And then all of a sudden the switch was thrown. But who threw the switch is the question. I would argue that TKR threw the switch today. TKR came in ready to play. TKR gave you little glimpses of what you saw in Europe, if you watch any of those games, and what you're going to see next year. But in the but before we talk about next year, let's enjoy this year, boys and girls. This is fun. Purdue gets to play Gonzaga next game. Gonzaga is much improved over what they looked like when Purdue played them first time, much improved over even where they were in the middle of the season. They got a really great coach with really bad teeth. And so Purdue's going to be ready, though. Gonzaga is kind of an inside out team. Their bigs are good. And then they got Nimbard's little brother, right? Um, and like I said to Anish, I want the Gonzaga game because of what I think of Gonzaga as a program. And I want Purdue right now playing about anybody with the focus that they're exhibiting. You see post game interviews. You look at Purdue when they're sitting on the bench as they're beating teams, they're still serious. This isn't even close to their goal. They're not even they're not even a tenth of the way to their goal. Um, I know there's they're further than a tenth if you look at six games, but I'm telling you, this wasn't it. This wasn't it. I asked for a perfect game, or when I was talking to my friends around town, I asked for the game like what Purdue played versus Rutgers, meaning the best version of Purdue to play start to finish. Purdue didn't give it today. And I mean that. I mean, like, I don't think this is the best version of Purdue. I think what you saw today is you saw, you saw a team that was physically better and, like I said, mentally completely focused and they just ripped out Utah State's soul. Like, I, I, I don't know how else to say it. Purdue played well. They did not play their best game. You didn't have a guy come off the bench who was like, oh, my gosh, can you believe how well whoever played? Cam Heidi going 7-for-7 seven seven like he did for Rutgers or Colvin coming in and just raining fire. By the way, and I don't think I'm speaking out of turn, was Matt Painter sandbagging on much of the nation with Cam Heidi? <laughs> and Miles Colvin. I'm beginning to think he was. When I say beginning to think, I absolutely think he has been sandbagging with Colvin and Heidi. And by the way, this is a move that Tom Izzo has done before. And perhaps, perhaps Painter said, you know what? I don't need to unleash this, this beast yet, but I'm going to. And we started seeing it towards the end of the season, right? A little bit more minutes for Heidi, a little bit more for Colvin. And then the Big Ten tournament, you see a lot of minutes, minutes from Colvin all of a sudden. Why? Well, maybe this is what Matt Painter was thinking. Is he, is he that much of a genius? Are we actually seeing Matt Painter turn over a completely new, conniving, beautiful genius, beautiful evil genius, Leaf? Maybe. Maybe. Anish sent me a text, and I haven't fact-checked it yet. Maybe you guys can tell me, but I believe this is true. This is Purdue's fifth Sweet 16 in seven years. That all of a sudden sounds like a program that's rock solid and in good shape. Purdue has not erased the FDU failure, not erased the, the Sweet 16 failure of St. Peter's. But they've gone a long way to just getting back to square one. Let's say that. Purdue is back to even. Now they, have, now they can go prove some real stuff in Detroit and, dare we say, Phoenix. Four more games, four more games, four more wins. Two more wins put you in a place that Purdue hasn't been to since 1980. I was five. Look at all the gray in my beard. If you don't know who I am, I'm 48 years old. I'm old. I don't remember Purdue playing in Indianapolis in the Final Four. And if you're watching this, probably you don't remember it either. But a couple of you in these in the margins do. Um... I'm extremely excited. I'm extremely pleased with what I saw. But at the same time, I think there's still upside here, guys, girls. I think good things are still coming. TKR, though, this is this the TKR game? Is, this the, is that what we're going to remember it as when we look back? I don't know. Uh, but that's the way I, I'm thinking about it right now, in spite of the fact that Zach Eady had, what, 21 points and 11 boards at the half. That's the second game in a row. He's had 20 and double-digit boards at a half in the half. He ends with somewhat normal Zach Eady numbers because he only played 26 minutes, I believe. He didn't have to play that much because Purdue was in such cruise control, had such command of the situation, such command of the game. There was one moment where they, they scanned over to Sprinkle, and he was nodding and squinting. 
It was in about three to five minutes into the second half. Almost as if to say, I think I've got it figured out. He didn't have it figured out. He knew it didn't have it figured out. And he's got better days ahead as a coach, but he ran into uh, not a buzzsaw, but like an industrial, um, and maybe you guys can help me, like an industrial mill saw tonight. That's what Purdue did tonight is um, it's historic in one way. It's the most points Purdue's ever scored scored in the NCAA tournament, but it's also just an absolute statement to the rest of the field. Purdue just played a a good, um, that's, that's a good team. That's not a bad team. That's a good eight seed, right? And they went through TCU, a really good team out of the best conference in America, to get to Purdue. And they went through them like a warm knife through melted butter. That's an incredible game. Purdue wins. 106 to 67. Zach Eady leads the way with 23 points and 14 boards. Like I said, he started the half. He started the game with 21 and 11 in relatively quick work. He also had three assists, two steals, and three blocks. That guy looks like the player of the year. Zach Eady, cool, calm, and collected. Dead serious, though. If you look at the steal on his face, he's not playing. Um... He's not done. Uh, Trey Kaufman Wren. Like I said, this is a great game for Trey Kaufman Wren. He was 8 for 13 from the field. He put Utah State dudes just absolutely in a blender. That spin move that he showed like, what, five or six time this year, times this year is just deadly. Because if it's the converse of Edie, right? Edie does it by saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pound you into submission while I'm trying to get in the blocks, trying to get my position, right? Kaufman Wren gets his position with that ultra wide base and that he's got trunks for thighs, right? So you get on there and you lean into him. And as soon as he feels your weight shifts, he moves as fast as a point guard on the spin move and gets right to the hoop. 18 points, eight boards, three assists, a steal, and two blocks from Kaufman Wren. Braden Smith, who was hampered by foul trouble. He also had a blowout shoe, which I found out from... Those of you in the arena, I think Chris Harder, my pal, maybe he's in the margins listening. I don't know. I haven't checked yet. He blew out one of his Nikes. Uh, he was wearing all white Nikes today. Um, but he blew them out, and the trainer had to get him some new shoes uh, just after the half. He blew one of them out, I'm guessing. But he got a fresh pair for symmetry. He only finished with five points, six assists, one steal, a couple, tur- three turnovers, right? Uh, four boards. Really, really, really off the pace for what we've come to be, uh, to believe is the is the norm for Braden Smith. All that says to me is water finds its level. Braden Smith will have a hell of a game next game. He's going to have a bit of a tough matchup. But like I said, it's going to take more than Nimbard to beat Purdue. Gonzaga's going to have to bring two or three guards that are ready to score. They're not going to pound Purdue in submission in the middle. They're just not going to do it. Purdue's too, be- too deep, even past Zach Eady. They're strong. They know that. Gonzaga already knows it. All the pressure, to me, is on this. You could say it's on Purdue, but I think it's on Gonzaga. They know they've lost their last two here, and they are gripping because they're like, okay, we got to play this team again. This is tough. They may feel good. I feel good to be a Purdue fan. I feel good about playing Gonzaga. I think you're going to hear all week long, though, the resurgence of Gonzaga. Gonzaga is just a team rising from the ashes. They're the Phoenix that's going to head to Phoenix, maybe what you're hearing. And I'm not buying that for a damn second. Purdue is absolutely the hunted here. Purdue is going to play their part because, like I said, this team's got, they got their focus on bigger things. They got their focus on bigger things. Fletch Lawyer, silky smooth all day. Played an effortless brand of basketball. I think he had one drive where he absorbed contact, and he, got, he ended up just absolutely splayed on the floor. But he finishes with 15 points, six assists, um, Rock solid game, I think. Let's see, four for four from the free throw line, one for two from deep. Didn't even didn't need to shoot from deep. Five for nine from the field. Like I said, silky easy game. The next guy that you want to look at um, would be Cam Heidi. Ten points, three rebounds. Um, Cam was um, he didn't do it with shooting from deep. What he did was he would clean up the mess over and over and over when it looked like a, a possession was going away, whether. Late in the game or early in the game, the ball would get bounced around. Um, Utah State trying to play a scrappy brand of basketball. Purdue would gather themselves, and Cam Heidi would finish. 
whether it's off the back of the rim on a play that looks like, okay, Utah State's going to pull down the glass, um, or just on a drive. Cam Heidi was kind of everywhere, and he's going to be in Utah State's nightmares tonight. Um, Colvin finishes with nine points, uh, three of five from three. Uh, late in the game, he thought, okay, if they're going to pack in right now, because they did late in the game, I'm just going to shoot these easy threes. And if you haven't watched Miles Colvin just shooting warm-ups, I highly suggest it. It's like, the, to me, he's as close to Robbie Hummel, Hummel and his stroke as any Purdue, fan we've, or any Purdue player we've had in a while in that his misses look like makes. His misses are prettier than many guys makes. He's just, the ball's so nice out of his hands. And he really is looking the part. Purdue had lots of guys score off the bench. Purdue played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten guys on the bench. Fifteen players saw minutes today for Purdue. An incredible feat. In rebounds, Purdue, uh, total rebounds, absolutely crushed Utah State, almost doubled up, 49-26. to 26. Offensive rebounds, Purdue had just 13 of them, but that's because Purdue got hot, started hitting all their shots. What do you mean? I just thought it was worth knowing. We get to see a Courtney Green master class. Oh, that's great. If you're, if you're in front of your television and you're at home, like me, because you don't have the money to, to get yourself into Baker's life, Courtney Green will be, repre- will be representing Big Ten officiating uh, approved groups as JMU plays the unlikable Kyle Tripowski and his brave coach, John Shire. Um, I didn't mention Lance Jones. He had nine points. Uh, he went uh, two for five from the field, had four assists, had a steal. Um, Lance still has not gotten into his groove in a game, and I think that should be scary to teams. We all know it. Lance can come alive in a hurry, and I think he will yet. I think it will happen. Um, let's see if there's anybody else to write home about. Berg had a couple really nice plays um, in off of in the not garbage time, but he went in there and he kind of flexed his muscle, showed what he can do in the post. Had a couple really nice. I think they were both turnarounds on his score. He had four points. Nope, two of them were free throws. Purdue shot free throws well, 82 percent from the line. They didn't shoot an exceptional amount for a Purdue team. 23 free throws is kind of what 20 to 23 is what we have come to expect. Um, let's see, Purdue turned the ball over nine times. Many of those, I, I would bet, if I, I didn't see the, the turnover count at half, my guess is seven of those were at the half. Maybe I'm wrong. Nope, I'm wrong, because one, two, three. I might be right still. Um, but I don't have the number there. Uh, it was great to see Waddell get in the game. Um, just a, uh, Chase Martin played, everybody played, Barrett played. Uh, let's see, did Morton shoot? Dang it. That's what my, my college roommate wrote me. He said, he said, will Purdue score 100 or will Morton hit a, hit a jump shot? Those were the two things he wanted to see. Well, Purdue crashes through that 100 barrier, barrier getting 106 points. And one thing that was really cool about the game is when Purdue needed guys to get rest or had foul trouble or whatever, Purdue's guys off the bench and Edie would go sit down for a minute and Purdue would extend their lead. And Purdue would sit their, their, their starters and the bench comes in, and they keep on keeping on. Nice, steady, consistent effort for Purdue. 49 points in the first half. 49-33, and in the second half, they absolutely poured it on for 57 points. Are they done? Have they played their best game? I don't think they've even come close to playing their best game. But they played maybe their most fun game for all of us out there in Purdue country who just enjoyed that one immensely. If you're anything like me, Sitting and taking a deep breath in the second half is is just an incredible um, uh, coup for me. It's just something that, man, I, I didn't feel stressed. I didn't feel angry at all in the second half, which I can be a bit of a rage monster at times, so that was nice. A lot of you guys are on here live. I appreciate it. it uh, Alexander is the first one there. Alexander uh, Jezak. Jezak. Uh, so it just puts train emojis. Lots of train emojis. Ryan, Michael, Anthony, Harrington says, hammer down, take it one game at a time. This is a schedule. This is a scheduled comment. Yep. That's that's what you got to see from Purdue is just continue to focus and continue to not celebrate too much. Going to the Sweet 16, this is what they played for. This is what they came for. This is the season they've been waiting for. C. Metzger says, my speakers work great. I, I, that must be, is that because of the ice? Is that, what you, is that the test? That's a nice test of fidelity. 
Ted Berkey says that was fun. I agree. It was very fun. Wow, that was a lot of fun. Brian Feldman says, oh, that's MHC says that. Brian Feldman says, choo, and he never finishes thought. I bet he was meaning choo-choo mothers. Brian Feldman, uh, Nathan Anderson says, beautiful game all around. Zachary Young, shout out to Utah State. They actually tried to play basketball, a basketball game, and I can respect that. Yeah, they really didn't try to get too cheap in spite of the fact that they warned everyone that they were going to go super physical. I I thought what they played was basketball. I agree. There wasn't any – you know what else I really like about Utah State? Is I didn't see stuff between, like, after a dead ball whistle, them throwing cheap bows or doing Wisconsin type antics. I hope Madison's going, is is nice this time of year for you, Wisconsin players. You're back home. Enjoy your time at home. Safety First says Imagine this week, we could have, we could go through a Sweet 16 Gonzaga, Elite 8 Tennessee, Final Four Marquette, the exact path it took to win Maui. Uh, that scares me a bit uh, to have to beat all three of them twice. I agree. That I, I, I don't love that scenario. The thing about Marquette, because I've been watching them play, and the thing about Kolick specifically, is every rest he gets, they will get better. I thought Marquette would bow out before now. If you've seen my bracket, it's an absolute uh, abomination. My wife is in the 99th percentile in the bracket challenge. I'm in like the 30th. But I thought Marquette would lose already because of Kolick's injury. And he was wincing almost the entire first game. And today he looked a little bit more comfortable. Um, Marquette's a team that you're like, okay, they're kind of gaining momentum. Uh, Midwest Toger says, all I can say is damn. <clears throat> Word. Just like Kendrick Lamar. Anci- uh, Ancient Astronaut says, boiler up. Brian Feldman says, the bench. Yeah, the bench came alive today. Specifically, um, I'm telling you. You guys can tell me if you think I'm crazy. But is Matt Painter just a Machiavellian rise from the dead genius with this bench? I, I don't know. It's tough to it's tough to see another possibility. The way these guys play, Heidi and uh, Colvin specifically, all of a sudden these guys look poised and like vets. Um, Pat Gottschall says, Choo Choo Mothers. Uh, Ryan Michael Anthony Harrington says, Fifth Sweet 16 per, uh, Tournament 7, or six, fifth, six, six, fifth Sweet 16 in seven tournaments. So, can we forget the narrative choke early? No, you can't forget it yet. And I would not put it to bed yet if I were Purdue. Uh, keep the chip on your shoulder, but let's just talk about that a little bit for all the teams that talk trash, the fan bases, uh, bases that talk shit to Purdue over and over about what has happened the last few years. I think most fan bases, when I say most in college basketball, would simply love to go to the Sweet 16 in most years. Purdue is now, oddly enough, back to that position that they were years ago with Matt Painter. Back with the Baby Boilers, that team was almost an automatic Sweet 16 appearance. Matt Painter's glass ceiling is the Elite Eight. Right? Let's see if he can bust through. Boilermaker 63 says PJ should draw up uh, the 33-9 play more often. PJ is the most underrated member of the Purdue basketball program right now. PJ Thompson has given Purdue new wrinkles and new looks off of -of out-of-bounds plays um, and in certain offensive sets that have confused and baffled other coaches that have been doing it a long time. P.J. Thompson is a guy that I hope Painter can just keep on the bench for a little while. Give him a raise already, Matt. It's time. Ted Berkey. Uh, wait. Oh, I got a couple under here. Boiler 63 says P.J. Oh, no. Jason D. Should we be concerned Utah State held Edie to two points in the second half? Yes, we should be very concerned. Edie should be very concerned, and he should go to back to West Lafayette a little bit pissed off and – Ready to chew on some glass this week. Yes, absolutely. I agree. John Roberts with a D says, I went to Detroit in the 80, in the 88 and it was a freak out for me. Me and my brothers went off to Windsor. Okay. I don't think we're going to lose this time. I wish I could gather them, uh, gather them and see. Um, I think what you're saying is you went to Detroit and Purdue lost in 88. I remember that actually. It's middle school for me. Um, And you went to Windsor and uh, had a good time. And now you think they're going to get out of Detroit. Let's not forget the last time Purdue was in Detroit, Isaac Haas broke his elbow. I don't mean to be uh, Eeyore here, but I was at that game in Detroit 
when Ed clapped, uh, cracked his elbow. Um, what was the team from California? You guys can tell me who it is, but I was I was in the two hundred seats and I heard it. I could hear his hear his elbow hit the floor. It was awful. No more of that shit. Let's get to the championship. Ted Berkey says, on to Maui, I mean Detroit. What is the difference? Daniel Nelson says, if you tell me before the game, Braden scores five, only scores five points, I think we're in a dogfight. If we shot close to 50%, we, kill, we shoot close to 50%, we kill Gonzaga. I agree. Kevin Albuquerque says, the Big Ten season didn't ruin their ability to play basketball. I'm so pleased with this. Uh, that's nice to see um, lots of basketball left. Let's hope Nate Anderson says, Miles, Money, Colvin, he's the big money dog, man, he can shoot it. Mark, Mark Garrity says, was nervous at first. Boilers seem stiff at the start. Absolutely, I agree with that. But Edie started to grind, and it got fun after that. I can't, I, the weight that must be off this team's shoulders, I mean, it must be incredible. They must feel like, okay, now we are here for what we were supposed to be here. I saw Marquette, I saw Kolick after the game that they won get teary-eyed in Indianapolis because he's like, you know, we, we thought about getting to the Sweet 16 since last year. I think this Purdue team, when they lost, I think they focused and said it's not just about getting past the first round, although the pressure is all on us about the first round. I think they said we need to get to the Final Four. That's where we're supposed to we're supposed to be, and we're supposed to let the chips fall where they may. I have been saying forever, what a month and a half, get me to the Sweet 16 where Purdue plays teams that think they can go straight up with Purdue. Remember, Gonzaga has a guy named uh, Ike, uh, spelled Ike, um, and he didn't do very well versus Edie. Back here. That's Duke. I thought I had a picture. But... I've got there's this great picture of Edie decimating a Duke player. I've got it in my computer. I don't remember who it is. I think it was the backup after e EK. It's a white guy with a bad mullet. It's shaved on the side. Um, I think Gonzaga wants this Purdue matchup, like I said, but I think they feel an immense amount of pressure. And I think Purdue feels an immense amount of le relief, but now they got to refocus, reset their jaws. Let's see what happens. Indian Colorado says, hell yeah, Brent, Mil Brent Williams says, boiler up. Looked great after the nerves settled. It was all about the nerves. Indian Colorado, boiler the up. Nathan Dolan says, Heidi and Colvin play equals awesome. Painter using them more late uh, late in the season keeps them on edge. I agree. Joe Sasser says, that was fun. Na Daniel Nelson says, Stan Van Gundy calling this game makes Stephen Bardo sound like Jim Nance. Yeah, there's a problem that CBS has. Hey, LBD. What do you want to show me? I was showing you yourself. Welcome okay, that's great. Don't don't turn on the volume. We had a problem last time. Yeah, uh, Dad Boiler Dowd was messing with me after the end of the game the other night. It was not good. <clears throat> Joe Sasser, Sasser said this was fun. Daniel Nelson says Stan Van Gundy. So CBS has got this issue where they're like, okay, we're gonna throw a bunch of NBA talent at the uh, NCAA tournament and it doesn't work. Doesn't work in season or pardon me, in studio, it doesn't work on the sideline. It's really lousy. These guys don't know a damn thing about the college game, and it shows over and over when they speak. Um, I, I've had enough of that. Put it on mute. Listen to the Varsity app. Listen to Rob Blackman and, and Bobby Buckets. All right. Uh, Frail Hammer says, strong victory pour. Yep, we're getting through that. We're working our way through it. Jay Boiler says, uh, Purdue has already beaten five of the nine Sweet Six teams. Damn it, that's a good, I love that, I love that factoid. Purdue has already beaten five of the nine Sweet 16 teams. Illinois twice, Alabama could make it six. I'll drink to that. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a good fact. Midwest Toger says, TKR played his ass off. Yes, he did. Dan, Andy Day says this, haha. -ha. B. Murph. Uh, I love it when Purdue just thrashes a team. The engine was roaring. Purdue had it all going today. Uh, Chris R. says, boiler up. The doubters in the national media are now on notice. Hop on board the train. Choo-choo mothers. So one thing that's funny is Wally Zerbiak. Wally Zerbiak um, said Purdue was going to lose in the first round. And uh, our friend Greg McManus called him out to his, added him on Twitter. No response, of course. And now Zerbiak is a boilermaker. He's a convert, I guess. Uh, I don't want you, Wally. Uh, you're not welcome on the train that we've all been riding this year. You're not welcome. 
you're you're welcome to go back and live in the past and the FDU um, loss. You're welcome to do that and keep just milling around in that stink and that filth, and we're going to move forward. Vincent Moster says uh, Edie only had two points and three rebounds in the second half. Again, that's good. It's a good stat. Mohill 93, Maury, how are you? Boiler up. Too bad old Wally didn't tear uh, tear up. Or tear up with his bad take. I, yeah, I, I um, Wally Zerbiak deserves a hard time. So I think his name's like, it's not Wally Ball? Wally Ball on Twitter? Something like that. Look it up and let him know he's a genius. David Dillman said, full steam ahead. This training looks unstoppable. Russ Collins says, Zach was super califragilistic, espialidocious, and I think the spelling is correct on a quick check. David Dillman says, I won't be surprised if Sprinkle is an elite coach someday. I completely agree. I completely agree. Um, he's good in the media, too. That's that's one thing that a lot of guys, you know, helps them propel maybe a little quicker. One thing that, um, if you didn't know this, I don't think we've talked about this, you and I. Um, May is now the coach at Michigan, and that's a big deal. Uh, IU fans assured many of us that he was going to be IU's next coach. Instead, they get to keep their uh, night era legend at coach. Everybody wins. I said this on Twitter. Everybody wins. Michigan gets their guy. IU gets to keep their guy. Big victory all around. Jay Boiler says it would uh, have been nice to see Edie get 20, 30 and 20. Uh, again, back to back. Yep, I agree. Didn't get our wish there. Who's Johnny? Do you think him not getting 30 and 20 keeps him from being player of the year? Comments below. Who's Johnny? Uh, I'm not sure if I've ever seen a, uh, a better played Purdue game. I don't know. I don't know about that. I think the funny thing about this, I'm telling you, I think the mental part of this game, the way Purdue would do things that countered what uh, Utah State wanted to do, and they did them with relative ease. One of my favorite plays, it's a, it's a, a micro uh, facial expression from Fletch Lawyer, was late in the second half, first half. You go back and watch this. He hits a jumper. It's not a deep jumper. I think he hits a two. And they panned a lawyer. Now, they may have gone to break with this. And lawyer, you look over at me, he's dead ass. He's just like, yep, that's what I expect to do. I think that type of thing, Purdue was so in their head letting them know that they were a better team that my, my nephew who was watching the game with me, literally he was like, can we stop this? And I was like, come on. And, I, and, and he, he may go to Purdue, my nephew. Uh, my nephew actually got the highest level Purdue scholarship available. And I don't know. He doesn't have a fake boiled sports name yet. I hope he goes to Purdue. Um, and I talked to him about it today. But he was feeling bad about this. This is a game, hopefully he's in the paint crew soon. He could not feel so bad about something like this and just enjoy it. Andy in Colorado says, so we could possibly have Gonzaga, then Tennessee, then Marquette. Yeah, feels like Maui, yep. JL says, effort. TKR brought the, phys brought the physicality we, need, uh, we needed, but the boost off the bench, hustling at both ends, kick-started the mojo. And I agree. I think there's a lot of praise to go around this team. And again, I don't think this is a perfect game. I don't. It was a fun game, but I don't think it's a perfect game. I think this game might be a little bit more of an indictment on the talent differential between Purdue and Utah State than it is about Purdue just playing the perfect game, if that makes any sense. Utah State and um, Mountain West, good season. I think the thing, I, I don't know any of the ages of Utah State. I'm sorry. But I've seen, there's this, there's this, tweet going around that talks about the age of UNC. If you haven't seen it, it's incredible. And I think I'm going to go, let me see if I can do this by memory. If you look at the starting five UNC from, um, I don't remember, they have a guard who's 25. They have another, uh, Baycott is 24. Another player's 23, another player's 22, and then they've got a 19-year-old. If That's five, I think. 25, 24, 23, 22-19. And the Oklahoma City Thunder at the same time has the same age, except the bottom, their youngest guy is 21 years old. So it's not really saying anything other than these experienced teams have an odd amount of men on their team. UNC has an odd amount of men on their team. Do I trust UNC in the tournament? I do not. I don't think they're that good, and I think they're a team that mentally takes their foot off, their ga off the gas often. Now, that will breach a lot of gaps, though, when you have guys that are that old playing boys, playing kids, however you want to say it. That's a big difference maker. Purdue's got a nice mix of men and guys that were developed. 
obviously. There are very few men with the size, strength, coordination, ability, drive of Zach Eady. When I say very few, you're dealing with an extremely elite athletic class. And then after that, you've got Lance Jones, who's a transfer, and he's also old. After that, you've got a bunch of guys that are college kids. Is that going to be Purdue's death knell eventually? Here's the thing. Get me to Phoenix and let me deal with that problem. Right. If you look ahead, you've got Gonzaga, which I don't think their age is anything to write home about. Um, Nimbard is a transfer, I believe, came to where his brother was, but he started his career. Was it in Dayton? I don't know. I don't know about that. I'm not a I'm not a Gonzaga apologist nor a Gonzaga fan. After that, you got Tennessee, which has some dudes. That's one that I think if you're looking at all these games, uh, well, you don't have Tennessee guaranteed yet. But let's not look too far ahead. Gentry, uh, he said, okay, Mid- Midwest Tour says Edie with how many assists for him? Let's see. What is that? For that night? For today? Yeah, Edie had three assists. No big whoop. So that's, what I, that's what the player of the year does. He just does that thing. Uh, Nathan Hart said four to go. If you look at my Twitter, one of my buddies, he has a um, six-pack. He lives in Michigan, so it's not easy to get. He's a Purdue alum. He's a very smart guy. Hopefully he's listening. Um, he's a nuclear pharmacist for all you uh, at home who are so, also smart people. But he bought a, a, a six-pack of the Boiler Gold beer, and he started cracking one open per victory last game, and then he did it again today. So he's got four more beers to crack open. His first crack open was beautiful, like the number or the number. The noise was beautiful. The second one, not quite as good. He was critical on himself, but you can't go back. Once you've cracked it open and you've sent the video, that's it. But I tweeted it out. There's four more beers. He's got to get. He's got to crack four more open. Um, let's see. Melissa Hunt says, "Holy smokes, we are good." Melissa, you know this. Here's what Purdue did today. They reminded everybody while they were in the to- why they were in the top three all year. Purdue is a top three basketball team. Purdue was in the number one spot for what six weeks this year. They were in the number one spot for eight weeks last year. Um, I have a whole podcast, by the way. That I want to, I'm not going to release it yet to you guys, but I'm thinking about doing it between now and Friday, since Purdue now plays Friday, so there'll be some dead time. I almost guarantee, and I haven't talked to my boys yet, that we'll get a handsome hour basketball beat type of four-man, three-man pod. So stay tuned for that for details. Maybe tomorrow night. Who knows? We got it all depends on how busy those guys are. I got nothing to do but this. Talk to you guys. Uh, Motor City Boiler says, see you guys in Detroit. Glad uh, buying tickets on January 8th and jinx it. Okay, so Motor City, you just hit on a profundity for me. I don't have a ton of superstitions, honestly, but one I have is buying tickets prematurely, and if a team loses, I would put it all on me for why did I do that. I've done it before. I bought tickets early, and it didn't work out. I did not want to do that this year. And as a result, I was put in the position where I was looking at StubHub in the last few days at Purdue tickets, and they ranged from 479 for last game before they broke, and then they fell hard down to 170 To today, I think they were 150 170 Maybe I should have taken the risk, but I got to tell you, again, I was it's like risk-reward. Purdue should beat Utah State. I firmly believe that coming in, and I was like, that's not the game for me. Like I said, if Purdue is the Final Four, I'm going to meet you guys in Phoenix. My family and I, were going to go to Phoenix. Will I be able to get in the arena? Probably not, because I don't have that type of money. I'm not Jay Money over here. I don't have that. But I want to be in Phoenix to hang out with you guys and enjoy just the feel. I want to know what that Final Four feeling is. Never had it. Um, Who's Johnny says, we see things come from Smith, Lawyer, TKR, Colvin, and Heidi. We see things come, yeah. Um, lots of good stuff is ahead. Let's see. Did, how did, I, did I reread that? Sorry. Solar TKR uh, says TKR was hot from the start. The rest of the guys were cold. Um, halfway through, boy, it's like halfway through first half. Yeah. Immortal uh, and the Avatar says uh, just a tornado thing. Talking about TKR, he was absolutely, absolutely destroyed. The Utah State defender on that. Let's see. Gerald Huff says uh, most season wins, highest point total. This team is rolling, and TKR was the game winner. So Gerald Huff's uh, referencing the fact that 31 wins is now a record for Purdue all-time, most points for a Purdue team all-time, and they are officially in a really good space. Let's call it that. Jay Boiler says next year's team is looking good. 
Um, we can we can talk about that a little bit. Zachary Welch says, great game from the boys. They seem to be focused and locked in, ready for more. Two-game tournament down, two-game tournament to go to get to Final Four. And I've been saying this. That's the whole trick. That's the whole trick. Don't look at the whole thing. How, what's the best way to eat an elephant? One bite at a time. That's what Purdue's got to do right now. Crimson Permanent Assurance says, I wanted to see how Wally Zerbiak was going to extract his male parts. Oh, okay, <laughs> I got to edit. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to read that whole thing. Nothing against you. I'm just not going to read that whole thing. Uh, it's it's somewhat family friendly in spite of the bourbon and my language sometimes. I apologize to everybody. I get a little wound up, but I'm not going to. David Dillman says, agreed. This team still hasn't even played a perfect game. If we get that, I don't think UConn or Houston is stopping them. I think I've told you guys this. I've got this weird sentimental thing for the future. When teams, teams, when national media types start talking about Purdue in a way that it's so glowing and it talks, it points Purdue at a championship type of run, it gets me in a weird spot. Like I'm like, I get choked up. I may get a little teary eyed. I wish I didn't do that because I feel bad about it. Um, but yeah, there's been a lot of talk that way, you know, at times. And uh, I don't want to hear more talk about that. I would rather see more Wally Zerbiak stupidity to reset me, get me angry, and get the players angry. Bulletin board stuff, that's what I'd appreciate more from Gonzaga this week. David Dillman says, this team still hasn't even played a perfect game. I agree. And if we get that, I don't think you... Uh, I just said that. Hey, Judith Johnson, TKR was magic living up to his... 75-0 and 0 player lounge ping pong match reputation. If you don't know it, very good point, Judith. If you don't know it, TKR is an absolute beast. Uh, I, I, table tennis is what we call it. Uh, table tennis, not ping pong. Those who, who carry the paddle will say table tennis. Brian T says, uh, Zach got the attention, but it was TKR and Heidi game. TKR single-handedly kept us in the game early. Gentry BN says, Heidi Colvin Lawyer, looking great also. Let's see if I can skip down to somebody with a new comment. Apologize to everybody. IC says, I love Heidi's hustle for rebounds, the athletic defense. I'm looking forward to the next three years with him, I think. Alex Chatton says, uh, five, five out of seven is correct. So five years um, out of seven with the Sweet 16. Uh, skipping 2020 because it doesn't count because it was a stupid year. I think we'd all like to forget 2020 in every way. Tariq Campbell says, thank God Smith got two fouls when it was close in the first half. Him sitting and Colvin coming in when he did was when the game was won. It's a good point. Chris R., no, not sandbagging, develop. Painter and his staff are the best in the nation. I think that's referencing what we've been talking about with Heidi and Colvin not playing much. So you can look at this two ways. You can look at it that it took time to get Colvin defensively ready. Tell me if you disagree with this. When Colvin comes in now, it's almost immediate. He'll have a steal, a block, a deflection. He is a completely different dude than he was early in the season. So if you want to just be level-headed and say, not build some weird conspiracy or some, like I said, amazing plan by paint, it just took time to get those guys in the place. Heidi started showing a little bit earlier. Regardless of what you see, you can see two guys that belong on the court with the big stage. Now the question is, are they steely-eyed and lock-jawed enough to deal with the really big stage? Because bigger stages are coming. Purdue's going to have a Friday night game where I believe, will they share it? They'll share it with one other team or will they stagger them? I think Purdue will have the national stage or the whatever you want to call it, the sole stage for the tournament for at least a half. And that's when it starts getting, you know, guys feel that, okay? You're in a different place. You're in Detroit, which I'd prefer it being someplace else, but that's pretty damn close to home. You have a ton of Purdue fans there. It's going to be good fun. Uh, Purdue's alumni club out of Michigan is pretty strong. Jimmy Huguenard, Huguenard sorry. I agree uh, with keeping Heidi and Colvin hidden as, as weapons. If Paint uh, intentionally did that, he's a genius. I agree. Hopefully one day we'll see in some book that this was all a plan. Uh, you say Fletch is the key. It's so spot on. He played great this this weekend. He did. And I think Fletch is absolutely the engine that makes the thing go or the straw that stirs the drink, whatever you want to use, whatever analogy. I think Fletch is extremely important. One thing I got a criticism of Fletch, I pray, and I hope that he gets this because as Purdue plays teams like, you can put Gonzaga in this group, but definitely Tennessee. When you drive against a really skilled 
uh, group of power forwards and you don't recognize real quickly that they're going to swallow you up, bad things happen. So Fletch has got to get his head, keep his head up when he's dribbling. He's done a really good job breaking teams down. Get to the hoop, dump it off, right? When they when you draw that double team, get it over to Big Zach or give it to TKR or something like that. Tonight, by the way, I said this. I said this on Twitter, and I know I'm getting close to an hour. I'm 45 minutes. One of my favorite things of the entire game, one of my favorite plays of the entire game was when Edie got, did he get quad teamed and dump it out and Purdue hit a three? I think he got quad teamed. And I was like, that's the FDU game plan, right? You're going to have a double team behind him and a hedge coming on top. And then you're going to even drop down another guy to say, we're going to try to do everything we can to keep Edie out. Edie hit a shooter out in the top. I think it was, I think that's Fletch's only three, if I remember correctly. But that play was such a backbreaker and such a statement that that shit isn't going to go this year, right? Big deal. Olive D. Jazzer. Olive Jazzer says Colvin game. Okay, that's what you're calling it. Uh, Bill uh, Santalik says, as a Purdue fan, this feeling feels so odd, and I like it. I love it. One day I'm going to tell you guys what I think about this season. Hopefully it's after the Final Four. Um, but I'm going to tell you about what I think this season is uh, for, in a bigger, in a grander scheme. Hopefully I'm right. True or false, says Jack O'Lantern 22. True or false, if you could pick one program for Purdue to take down in the tourney, it would be a Gonzaga. You know me, man! Jay already knew that. He knew it when it's absolutely true. Uh, my dream bracket as Purdue going through Gonzaga, I can't stand Gonzaga. Some of it's their fault. Some of it's the media's fault. I do not like things that the media gloms onto. I don't care what it is, what the topic, whether it's sports, pop culture, News, I do not like things that the media gloms onto. And Gonzaga is a media-created entity. They're good. They're good. Skeletor's a good coach. I would love for Purdue to decimate Gonzaga in a similar fashion as they just did Utah State. It would make my freaking year. Do not like Gonzaga. Chris R. says TKR and Edie uh, where the body blows in the first half. The guards provided the knockout blow in the second. Good point. Judith Johnson says, FDU ought to pay Purdue for the year-long notoriety. Holy crap, Judith. How many times are we going to see the highlights, right? I mean, goodness, it's already old. Andrew Lincoln says, I'll catch up later, Dowd. Out to celebrate. Thanks for your not-so-quick cast. They are not very quick any longer. It's very true. Much of that's the team effort, though. The live comments and us interacting, that's part of it. Andrew Lincoln says, oh, that's okay. Gosh, I do that all the time. Um, let's see. I'm going to go down here to somebody who hasn't... I'm going to get it, see if I can find it. Uh, Terry Campbell says that's the 20th ranked team in the AP poll. Very good point. Very good point. I love that point. So, mercy, that's great. I love it. That's the 20th ranked team in the AP poll. Brew just beat them by a billion. Andrew Pedigo says, my wife has been saying this for weeks. She thinks Painter has been pulling the reins on Heidi and Colvin most of the season to avoid them from coming anywhere near the freshman wall. <laughs> okay. Now, see, the dumb thing about me is I didn't think about that angle. Tell your wife, she's a genius. Well done, Aaron. You outkicked your coverage like almost every man I know. There are a few that didn't, but it sounds like you did. That is an awesome point. To keep a player from hitting the freshman wall, which Painter just saw last year. We saw Lawyer and Smith hit a little bit of a wall. I would say that both of them tried to power through, but they couldn't do it. But to keep players from hitting the freshman wall. Mm, 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 mm. Tastes as good as this rye I'm drinking. Uh, Mr. Meister says, love seeing Colvin drain threes. He's silky. Uh, JL says, when uh, Boiler D shows up, they uh, play with intensity. Uh, it gets the ball movement, spacing, killer instinct going as well as a unit. They are starting to really gel at the right time. Like I always say, give me the best basketball in March. That's all I ask. I'm a simple man. Give me the best basketball in March. And I'm not saying a meteoric nuclear version like uh, Carson Edwards. I don't need that with this team. I said it all year. I figured it out back in November. This is a weird team. When teams look at Purdue, they say, oh, crap, we have to deal with that. Physically, Purdue is tough, and it's not just Zach Eady. 
it's a five-man team, and it gets into the bench. And now you get into this weird thing where you have these extra layers that maybe they didn't see coming. So it's not just Gillis coming off the bench. Well, now you've got other guys coming in and that might strike a little bit of fear athletically. When your guys are tired and they need a blow, and you're like, let's get them out and give them a break. And now you have Colvin and Heidi coming in, ultra-athletic quickness. Guys that can get in the passing lane. Guys who can beat you to the basket. Guys that can flush at the rim. Let's go. John Faker says, really impressed with the way Colvin, uh, Miles Colvin has played. He's very under control. I agree. It, when he's making shots, really positive to have him uh, as the black ace next week. So that's, is that a gambling term? I'm sorry. I understand that's probably something like you keep it hidden on the table. I don't know. I don't gamble. You guys know that. Jay Tent says, I've always thought if Painter can win the first game of the weekend, uh, we will dominate the second game because his teams are just too much to plan for in two days. Agreed. So let's use that same equation. But this time, I think, like I said, uh, I like Purdue planning against a team they've already played and beaten. I like this coaching staff a lot. Um, I like them playing Gonzaga. For my own personal reasons. John Ryer says, great karma. Surpassed the 87 team for points scored during the tourney. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. I'm going down here. Karen Gerlach says, team Fletcher all day. Thank you uh, from Boiler Up. Thank you from Boiler Up in Fort Wayne. Um, thank you, Karen. Uh, let's see. Carrot Panda. Who I, I mispronounced the name the other night. I called Carol Panda. Everyone got theirs today. Colvin and Heidi have made this team so great, allowing everyone to get switched out and refreshed. Let's see. Let's get down here. A lot of good comments. A lot of people repeating. Pre appreciate all of it, but I want to get out here in some way. Okay, at, uh, there we go. YouTube is giving me the business here. They've, they've completely taken it. Alfred Dowd says, you simply don't like the Zags. I do not, Dad. That is correct. Um, let's see. Anybody else down here? Zach3605 says, man, Duke is balling right now. Duke is up 33-17. Don't like Duke. Don't like Duke. Would like another chance at Duke. I'd like any chance at Duke. Always like to play Duke. Hate Duke. Hate this Duke team. I think this Duke team is mentally soft. I think they're led by a big, soft marshmallow of a man named Kyle Trapowski. And I think their coach is also soft. I think he's a faker. I think he was born and bred in Duke Blue, and you see it every time he talks. He's a fake. I didn't have any issues at all with Shire until he started going to the media about that bullshit when, when the, in the court storming. Get out of here. Russ Johnson says, I don't think it's a hiding or pulling the reins thing. So this is counter to what some of us have said above, including me. They just needed to learn the defense and, learn, uh, and earn their minutes. We don't have voids coming into the season. Uh, that we had last year. So that that point is just there's no there's no grand plan here. It's it's just it just takes time to develop freshmen. Well, that's fun to say, but I like my weird conspiracy theory Matt Painter better. Thank you very much. That's what I'm gonna go with. Matt Keller says, uh, "You having sweet sixteen? What's that mean? You having sweet sixteen? I don't know. You having sweet sixteen gear? I don't know what that means. Do I have any sweet sixteen gear?" I don't know. I don't know what that means. Ancient Atomic Immortality says, I saw some moron saying uh, USU's power forward comment. Okay, so Utah State's power forward center combo is going to work Edie and be the matchup nightmare, in quotes, for him, like Purdue only has had him in their front court. They should have scouted TKR. So what they did is they said, we're going to remove Edie from this equation by double and triple teaming him. Quad, quad teaming them at times, and there's nothing else Purdue has. That's what they said. So maybe they were just watching the only video they had. Maybe CBS only provided FDU video for uh, Utah State, and they're like, nom, 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 just ate it up. Regardless of what the situation is, they were burnt by their tactic. There's no doubt. Um, Gerald Huff says, Ed Albanese would prefer Creighton. We'd torch that team. I'm going to... You can look it up on the uh, the Boiled Sports Bracket Challenge. Uh, I have Creighton beaten Purdue. To be real honest. And that, remember, I picked that before the tournament. But my whole thing is, I'm a, I'm a history buff. It's been a long time since Purdue's been in the Final Four. Creighton is a team that scares me for multiple reasons. But here's the one that gets me. 
They've got a center that almost can guard Edie straight up. Kalkbrenner is a good center. He's not as strong as Edie, obviously. He can pop out and he can hit a three every now and again. But then they've got multiple guards that are really, really good with the ball in their hands, and they can make shots. Can Purdue match up with those guards athletically? Yeah, they can. There's where it gets trouble for Creighton. That's the biggest issue. But if you look at Northwestern as a model for a team that has found ways to beat Purdue the last couple years, right? It's multiple guards that can beat you and then maybe just beating the living hell out of Edie. Now, the next thing, the next level, teams have struggled when they said, we're going to go straight up against Edie. My hope is that McDermott says, yeah, we're going to go straight up against Edie. If they do that, I think it's going to be good, good things for Purdue, if that's that matchup. If Purdue gets Creighton, not Tennessee. I think the one thing, if you're looking at another tournament thing, another historical thing, Tennessee is going to struggle in the tournament because of coaching discrepancies, because of coaching problems. Purdue has the same uh, dark cloud hanging over their head, and that is history in getting a team to the Final Four, right? Painter hasn't done it. So, yeah, we'll see. You, something's got to break. Is what is really, if you look at this bracket, that's really what it is. Something's got to break. And if you say it's only coaching experience that makes the difference, it's Gonzaga's bracket to lose, right? Now, Let's see how well a resolute Purdue plays a developed Gonzaga. This Gonzaga team is better than they were back when Purdue played them last time. There's no doubt. T-Bone says, old man here, 1980 grad, awesome. Likewise, I was almost choking up one, uh, once we put, put it in gear. What a great group of representative Purdue. Uh, so T-Bone, class of 80, that means he was on campus when Purdue went to the Final Four last time. Like I said, my dad... He's class of 70, was there in Indianapolis. And um, I love, number one, hearing of you guys who were there and remember it. I don't remember it. I want my son, gosh darn it. I want my son to grow up in a, Purdue, a, a world where Purdue is just the dominant force. I don't, I mean, like, I when I was a kid, when I was a kid, it was an IU ball game in central Indiana, right? Um, where... Bobby Knight's IU Hoosiers ran the damn state. And I had to deal with that my whole freaking life growing up. And it never got corrected. The closest I would argue we got to correcting that was Glenn Robinson, right? And I was on campus for that. And it felt like when my roommate and I went to Knoxville to see Purdue lose, that that was the year that Purdue was going to break through to the Final Four. And then again, you have some improb improbable runs into the Final Eight. And then you have... Of course, Carson Edwards, which was pretty improbable. That's a Purdue champion four seed, right? That's a, that's a Big Ten champion four seed Purdue. But how weird is it? I'm sure many of you have tried to wrap your brains around it where Purdue is literally the story in the state of Indiana and all the old bull crap, the story of dusty banners and all that stuff that most of these kids weren't even born for. When I say born for, I mean they weren't there, right? It didn't happen in their lifetime. It's all based on legend and stuff their mom and grandpa and uncle talks about. Gets put to bed. Here's the thing, the little trick, and you've probably thought of this if you're a Purdue fan. We're, gonna, we're getting close to an hour. And that is Purdue gets in the best, 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 best case scenario this year, of course. It's going and winning a championship. Purdue does that, by the way. They're going to go through some absolute mothers. And this is the thing that I, that I was made very aware of the last time Purdue got to the final eight when they had to go through Tennessee. They, remember, they had to go through Jay Wright's Villanova. They had to go through Tennessee, and then they ran into Virginia, who was coming off of their loss to a 16. That is just murderer's row. And when you get into the sweet 16, let's not forget what you're getting into. Matt Painter is completely aware of this, by the way, that the Sweet 16, the round of 32 even, you're playing the best teams in America. You guys referenced it above this Utah State team. That's the 20th best team in America, according to the AP. <coughs> that's a big deal. And so now you're in the Sweet 16, and you've got the best of the best, and you've got this era of parity where anybody can beat anybody. And the weird thing is you've got a team that's been there time after time and Gonzaga playing Purdue in Detroit. Mean Streets of Detroit. 
That's the, uh, what, the Little Caesars, is that right? Little Caesars Arena? But the, it's still, it's still an era where anybody can beat anybody. James Madison's not showing up too well versus Duke today. Duke is showing that their five stars have grown up a lot this season. I don't. I haven't looked at that part. I don't know who Duke will play next year, next week, next. You know they're going to get through this game clearly. Um, I wanted James Madison to beat Duke because I disdain Duke. Um, but they're this. This is a chance where can can youth beat the non traditional college basketball team filled with twenty five and twenty four year old guards specifically. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Last year was a weird year. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. Nolan23 says, Boiler up, Dad. Glad to see TKR playing well and Gillis and Lawyer knocking down shots. And I think that's my last comment. Let's let do one more. Chris Curtis says, um, Look, the Purdue Fedora guy is a bit over the top, but we have him at these games. We need his goofy ass at these games. I think somebody talked about that up here. I love the fact that Purdue is what it is at this point. Meaning you've got this group, the Purdue suit guys, right? You got the Purdue suit guys. I don't know their names. I know that they're well funded. I don't know how you're that young and you can go to every game. I think it's awesome. I can't do that. I, I'm not kidding. I can't afford these games. The Fedora guy who made himself famous in Maui, right? You've got tons of podcasts, quick casts, just like this. You'll get to watch if you choose so. What a great era of Purdue personality and so many options out there showing the strength of the fan base, the size of the fan base. You guys came out in force today, 1,067 live views. Never happened, never crossed 1,000 before. Like I said, there's been a growth year, and it's not me. It's the fact that Purdue is so damn special. I have a feeling if Purdue can do what I think they're capable of, this party gets much larger in the coming weeks. We're going to have a lot of fun together. All Purdue diehards, you guys, um, it's been a lot of great fun this season, and it ain't over. So Purdue wins their 31st game. Purdue heads out to Indianapolis, do, handling their business and up to Detroit. But first, a quick, spot, a quick stop in West Lafayette for a couple days. Welcome them home, students. If I've got a couple students li uh, listening, this is stuff you should cherish. I really mean this. I mean, I'm 40, like I said, I'm 48, and the... Um, I remember, I remember that Glenn Robinson team like it was yesterday. My dad probably remembers remembers Rick Mountain Company like it was yesterday, back in the '60s. This is stuff. This is special, but it's made for the students, not made for old people like me. Have a great day. God bless you. Hammer down. Talk to you soon. See you.